when I went to the nation of Brazil, we were in Sao Paulo, in, an, in a commercial district in Sao Paulo, and I saw some guys. I don't know what happened to them, but according to the psychiatrists, they were in the bottomless pit, the bottomless pit. That means there is no knowledge known to man that can bring them out of that condition. Hallelujah. There's a certain kind of drug. If they take that drug, they are gone. And when, when they take that drug, uh, uh, the, 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 the victim of that drug begins to go bleed dirty and smelly. And you find them on the streets in the night looking for the most terrible place in order to make it a place of abode. It was when I saw him and the most conducive place for him to find as a habitation was the tomb. And so spirits can be defined by their most predominant character. And so Jesus used the second definition to identify this personality. Called him the spirit of truth. I need to spend some time. I need to spend some time to explain to us what Jesus meant by the spirit of truth. Jesus made a statement. He said, I have so many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. The first thing that was wrong that resisted Jesus from downloading the things he intended to release was a deficiency of, of capacity. There was an obvious deficiency of spiritual capacity that was inherent in his disciples and because of that deficiency, Jesus had to hold back on several things that he intended to divulge to the disciples. I know, I know, that, that, I know you are not following. There's this so, so, so sought after prophet somewhere in Nigeria. It's an accurate prophet, highly gifted, highly endowed. And I don't know what led to the situation I'm trying to describe, but in order for you to see him, there is an elaborate protocol that you will have to subscribe to. First of all, you pick up a form. When you pick the form up, you fill it and you return it. After returning it, they will screen the forms and if you pass the form level, you go to the first screening level. When you come to the first screening level, you are interviewed and all of that. And if there is justification that you should proceed in the um, exercise, you will be admitted to the next screening level. And when you go to that screening level and you succeed, you will be admitted into the last level. And in the last level, the personal assistant of this prophet just comes up and he looks upon you. And if, if by any means your face doesn't look so good, you need to start again with the form. So there was this woman that attempted uh, seeing the prophet and, and she got to the third level and the PA happened not to like the way she looked. And uh, the whole process was aborted at that point and she was referred back to the form level. So she got angry and left the place. And it came to pass that this prophet was, once upon a time, was heading for redemption camp. And he had a flat tire. And his flat tire became flat in front of the woman's shop. And fortunately for the woman, the um, PA was not available to look upon her face anymore. And the rigid protocol was not in place. So she just ran out of her shop and said, Baba. And the prophet looked upon her and began to release some word of knowledge. Said, oh, this is the challenge that you have. And the source of this challenge is your mother. She shouted because her mother has been taking her from place to place looking for solutions. So she could not believe that aspect that her mother was involved. Then the prophet had to go deeper and say, okay, what about this? Are you aware of this? He said, yes. Are you aware of this? This happened because of this and that happened because of that. Hey! This, this, that, that. And, and as the delivery, the download was going on, um, the driver finished swapping the tires. Revelations were downloaded, but the woman was not inducted on how to use spiritual material. The prophet left and because the woman did not have the capacity to handle that kind of revelation. It became the source of a civil war which started in that family and it is existing till today. Now the problem was that it was not that the revelations were wrong but the woman did not have the capacity to handle it. And it, Jesus the revelator would rather not communicate anything if he knows there is a capacity situation in his audience. So he decided that okay if it's Jesus he will refrain from Downloading those revelations. Haven't checked her capacity through discernment. 
So in the ministry of Jesus, ministerial frustration will be equivalent to the incapacity of the people to bear the, the, the strength and weight of things he intends to communicate with them. A lady was walking down the aisle with a young man and they were heading to the altar to be all through the period of their nine months of courtship. Kind. And he dresses quite well. He's, he has a golden frame. Hallelujah. And as, as, as they were going down the aisle, the spirit of truth whispered. Because there was no evidence in his suggest that he had anger in his bosom. Such anger that was demonic. And for the nine months of the courtship, there was nothing suggesting that there was such anger in his bosom. And as they were moving towards the altar, she happened to know the Holy Ghost a little. But she was dazzled by the golden frame of this young man and did not acquire the law. And just before they got to the altar, the Holy Spirit whispered. He said, you are marching into hell. Now, you see, the spirit of truth, he, he is the one, he's the custodian that holds the perspective of truth. If you want to know truth, then you need to receive his witness. And Jesus is saying that this is the personality that is coming to take on the stage of the administration of the purposes of God in your life. Hallelujah. So she received a witness from the Spirit of God. And as they were moving, the Holy Ghost flashed again because throughout the nine months that they had the courtship, the Holy Spirit did not have any opportunity to whisper to the lady. She was so busy with chats. She was so busy with WhatsApp messages. She was so busy with selfies. Hallelujah. And she didn't have time to inquire of God. The only moment the Holy Spirit had was the time between the pew and the altar. And the frequency was so powerful. The energy of God was captured, galvanized into that one second that the Holy Ghost had a shot at her heart. And the Holy Spirit, he said, you're going to hell. Oh, you know the Bible says that wisdom cries in the street. I pray tonight that you will hear the cry that is coming expressly from the Spirit of God that is designed to avert darkness that is to come, that the grace of God will be poured out on you and you will find sufficient courage to, to take a position consistent with the directives of the Holy Ghost in such a time. She received strength from God instantly and she stopped the motion to the, to the altar. Everybody in the congregation was amazed at what was going on. It looked like a drama. Something that should be in, in a home video. She stopped the motion. And she, when the whole thing was trying to become a scene, the reverend came down from the altar and tried to find out what was going on. And she said she needs time. I need time. I need time. I don't understand what I'm hearing. I, ju I just need time. And then that rage, that rage that the guy had bottled up, he had packaged the rage for nine months. It was there in his suit. It was there in his avatar. He never came out of the hiding place in his heart. That rage, um, nine months compressed rage. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He blasted out in the whole place and she had her confirmation right there before the altar. May you not march all the way to the altar without a sign. She found boldness in God. She found courage. And she began to weep and repent for not consulting with the Holy Ghost. The whole place went gaga. The, the, the family of the young man got angry, left. You know what? This lady, no one knew that the hand of God that makes an evangelist, a mighty evangelist was upon that lady. And all of that calling was going to go into the drain just because of that walk. May you walk under the influence of the lamp of God that enlightens your, your path. May you walk under the inspiration of God, that candlestick that was upon the head of Job. And by the illumination that he brought, he was able to navigate through darkness. May God shed light into your darkness in the name of Jesus. So the spirit of truth is a personality that you need to consult if you want something beyond the political response, if you want to know the verity in terms of the testimony that God sustains about the matter, you will need to tune to the spirit of truth. 
his voice has become unpopular in our time but just in case you need to go beyond the politics beyond the motion and to find a position that God sustains then you have to tune to his signal the spirit of truth this was the personality that Jesus was introducing to the apostles he said my time to leave the scene has come but a new lecturer is coming here and this lecturer has an approach that is different from mine whereas if you have a limitation in terms of capacity i will hold back and i'll refuse to communicate to you what i'm already mobilized to communicate because it will not profit you in that instance but when the spirit of truth comes you no longer have a capacity issue because he himself will be the agency through which your your capacity will be enlarged see there's no more capacity challenge in, in the regime of the spirit of truth whereas jesus will come and communicate to you kingdom things and when he does communicate the spirit will be released through his communication so that your capacity can be built for, for the spirit of truth is the other way around when he comes he will not come speaking because jesus's means or tool for teaching for instruction was speaking but you see when the spirit of truth comes jesus said he he, he will guide you he has a different method he will guide you into the experience of the things Jesus would have wanted to tell you so that you become the evangelist that will proclaim those things to others. His line of business has to do with experiential encounters so that you become the witness that will bring his perspective to the people around you and to the nations of the world. I remember some time ago, it's about 22 years ago now, our prayer place was the technical block if you visit Benway State University. So we go into that place. It is removed from the campus. So when you shout, nobody is disturbed by your shouting. I, I, I remember uh, many, many more years in 1990. When we came in Hotten Level, the, the, the prayer place was filled up. You will hear so many people praying. By the time I got to 300 Level, we were only two people. That used to come there and when the other guy comes because we never meet when the other guy comes and he's praying and we hear him when i'm praying he also hears me and we never met for many years we were in that place as voices voices of prayer and that prayer was ascending to god and one morning it rained it was so cold i was tired and the the cold was like air conditioning that was a day that Prayer was not the priority. Because of the cold, oh my God, I stretched myself. Hallelujah. I, I, I rolled over. Came under the blanket to move the sleep to the next level. Meanwhile, that was the day of encounter as scheduled by God. God keeps a calendar of visitations. The Bible says he made man of one blood and he preordained the, the times appointed and the boundaries of their habitation. There are two things influenced by the sovereignty of God in that scripture. The place where you dwell and the time of your visitation. And for me, that was the morning of my visitation. But because of the cold, I, was, I had a different item on my scale of preference. And that item was slumber. Oh, Jesus. And I rode over to make a move and increase the megabytes of the sleep. And while I was still in that motion, I felt someone held my hand. And when, when, when he held my hand, all the sleep dried out. And I woke up. I was the only one in the room. Since there was nobody, I went back into my blanket to engage gear, the gear one, to move again. The hand held me again. Sleep left my eyes. I woke up, checked the place, nobody. This time, I wasn't going to stand up again. I entered into the blanket this time it was for good and the hand that held me held me again i woke up the hand was still holding me in fact he held me and raised this hand like this and that's how it took me i know you won't believe it but today you will, what will happen this night will make you believe my story <laughs> the hand held me and did not leave until i was domiciled in that place to pray and when I spoke in tongues that morning, my voice was the only voice. I didn't hear the voice of my partner. I spoke in tongues. I spoke in tongues. I spoke, oh my God. 
And the more I spoke in tongues, I felt that the Holy Ghost was coming closer. And I spoke in tongues, he was coming closer. I spoke more in tongues, and he came closer. Hallelujah. I spoke in tongues, I felt him around me. His presence was so intense as if he hugged me. And he held me in that position. I was there for 45 minutes, he hugged me. That same hand that held me, he held my entire being. Right there, just alone, 4 a.m. in the morning. That was when I knew that the Holy Ghost was a person. Not because I saw it in scripture, I experienced him. Jesus said, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all reality. There was no way I could know that the Holy Ghost was a person outside of that encounter. That encounter was his means of guiding me into the reality of his person. So from that moment, when I encountered him and was sure of the fact that he was a real person, I began to speak to him. It became customary for me to communicate with him because I knew the reality of his personality. I'm talking about a knowledge that you cannot learn because you attended a lecture. I'm talking about a knowledge that you cannot receive because you stumbled on the library. I'm talking about a knowledge that is revealed, is handed out, is given to you from the realm of God. He, he will guide you into all reality, experiential knowledge. That's what the Bible calls epignosis. And that's the knowledge that Paul calls the knowledge that is excellent. The kind of knowledge that the Holy Spirit will give has the capacity to minister life. And if you have ever seen this, you will know there is nothing like it. The devil can tempt you with lust, and you are lost in over a sister, a lady. The moment you defile yourself with that lady, you will find it is empty. The reality that the lust was promising, that reality you will not be able to touch it. There is no substance to it. It's like, it's like a city that doesn't have true foundation. And you will know it is a lie, like a mirage. You reaching out to hold it, but the moment you arrive there, you find it was not really there. That's not how it is with the Holy Ghost. He leads you into the depth of reality. A reality that stays with you and becomes the wisdom by which you prosecute life. I shared that story about my encounter in the place of prayer many years ago. That was the beginning of my pilgrimage into the knowledge of him that feels all things. That does all things according to the counsel of the will of God. He's going to come here. And he will come here so strong, so powerfully, so mightily this night. Because while I prayed, I said, is it possible for you to come out of the closet and come into the open? He said, go, I'm coming. Hallelujah. <laughs> March on, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. And when he came, he kindled that song that I asked um, Theophilus to sing about revival. He sure knows how to make an appearance. He can come with a song. If you know where to look, you will see him when he comes. In the brightness, in the, in the brightness of the glory of God, he comes. He can come with a song. He can come with an impression. But all the same, he comes. I pray that your spiritual senses, that your receptacle will come alive so that when the Holy Ghost passes by, you will be able to identify him and know that the spirit of truth has come. Because when he comes, there is an administration he begins to put in place. He begins to distribute from an economy. An economy of spiritual blessings that are domiciled in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He begins to distribute. Your own allocation will get to you tonight in the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost will come to you. And he will come to distribute to you out of the economy of the bounty of God. Something is rising out of Benway State that will bring healing to the nations of the world. God has willed it and so shall it be. It is the Spirit of God. He is visiting us in a fresh way, in a new way, an unprecedented way, so that from among us, God will raise functionaries through whom darkness will be put to flight. If you are in the number, say amen. amen. I want to give you the opportunity to, to talk to him because he has come. This is the last day of the meeting and you are going with the fullness of God. 
revival, come, come, come. Revival, come, come, come. Revival, come. Can you talk to him because we'll go into the a healing service after this time out? But make sure you are talking. Revival, come. Revival, come. Revival, come. Revival, come. Revival, come. Sing revival, come. Revival, come. Revival, come. Revival, come. Revival, come. Can you talk to him? Thank you for watching. Do well to subscribe, like, share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what God is doing from this platform. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook and we are on Twitter. Thank you.